folks, my name is Chris and I'm an engineer here at Acromag. This is part two of our introduction to VPX series. Shortly here I'll be discussing uh, open VPX, which is Vita 60.5 and the uh, requirements contained within. Um, once again, all the information I'm presenting here today is also available in a white paper called Introduction to VPX, available from our website at www.acromag.com. So, why did OpenVPX come around? Well, if you were listening to our part one of our presentation, uh, you noticed that there were a couple issues that came up. First, with your VPX, you have a point-to-point -point zero bus connection. Um, so the question was, is how does this get routed on the back plane? Well, a lot of that depends on what you actually need and what kinds of boards you actually have in your system, uh, which is never a good way to have to define the backplay based upon the customer's needs. Um, Vitas 48 was rather silent on the issue, so unfortunately the, the results were almost that the users had to create their own backplay. Um, the second issue was, well, what type of high-speed serial bus are you going to use? There's several issues from, from the Vita 46 dot specifications. You have Gigabit Ethernet, you have PCIe, and you have Rapid IO. Now, those standards are relatively incompatible with each other. You can't have a processor board that talks rapid IO and expect it to talk to a plugin module that supports PCI Express. So that's the second issue. Now the third issue is all of the new pitches and different cooling types that were defined in Vita 48. So you have three different thickness or pitch of boards, you know, 0.8 inches, 0.5 inches, and 1 inch. You also have three different types of cooling methods. You have air-cooled, conduction-cooled, and then conduction-cooled ready. And I'm not even considering liquid at this time. So the big question that came when consumers went to look to buy these products is, you know, this is supposed to be a COTS commercial off-the-shelf system. You're supposed to be able to buy components from various vendors and just plug them all in. Well, with all of these added complications, actually getting a system together that would be compliant is, ended up being a huge nightmare. You know, what type of SBC do you buy? How is it going to talk? What type of backplane are you going to buy? How is it going to route to all your various modules? What type of chassis are you going to buy? What type of thickness boards do you need? There are a lot of questions to, to this standard, and actually it almost made it uh, that each user would end up having a customized system, which in the end defeats the purpose of having a standard in the first place. So industry recognizing this problem got together and created the open VPX system, uh, also termed Vita 65. Now, Vita 65 tried to take all of this uh, nightmare of options available in the two lower standards and put a, a architecture around them, basically a way to determine if the backplane in your system is going to be compatible with your plug-in module, to determine if your chassis is going to be compatible with all your boards. Now, they did this through what's called profiles. And we'll get into the profiles in a little bit here. Before we do that, we need to introduce some basic VPX, uh, Vita 65 terminology, uh, just so you understand uh, what's going on. All right, the first one I'll be discussing is pipes. Now, a pipe is actually a name for a high-speed serial bus that doesn't have any type of protocol associated with it. Uh, for example, in the picture on the left there where it says single PCIe lane, you notice that a PCIe lane composed of two differential pairs, you have one transmit and one receive. Well, in Vita 65 terms, that is a single pipe. Um, so basically that means one transmit and one receive differential pair is equal to one pipe. Uh, on the picture on the right, you have the PCIe four lane example implementation. Uh, in that case, you're going to have a total of four pipes, which is four lanes, uh, which actually is eight differential pairs. Now, the reason he Vita 65 went and did this is that because of all the different possible high-speed serial bus protocols you could use, um, they wanted some way of uh, determining what the backplane and the boards were able to uh, communicate with regardless of that protocol. For example, backplane, you know, two high-speed differential pairs, doesn't really matter what, what uh, protocols actually use. It's just as long as the differential pairs themselves maintain the signal integrity that you need. Uh, so, e 65 came up with this terminality to get rid of the, the protocol from the high-speed high differential pair description. Um, and the graph below, you notice, has some names depending on how many differential pairs you have. Uh, they have an ultra-thin pipe, which is actually two differential pairs, which is 
in this case, example of a one lane PCI Express. Uh, you had a thin pipe, which is four differential pairs, which is two lanes of PCI Express. You had a fat pipe, four lanes of PCI Express, et cetera, et cetera. The next term, and the most important one to understand, is planes. Now, planes, Vita, planes are basically the division of all the signals on the P0, 1, 2 uh, connectors, or 3U in this case, um, divided into different groups depending on their function in the system. Um, all the pins are divided into these groups, so they're giving a, a specific definition for how they can operate with the other back plane the slots in the system. So the first and most important one is going to be the data plane. Now the data plane, commonly on P1, is going to have all your slot-to-slot, high-speed, serial bus connections. Uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, definitely required for any board in a VPX system because you have to have somebody to communicate with, with all the other products. Um, the second item is a control plane. Now the control plane contains um, a connection that goes from back plane to back plane. So basically it's an external connection from one VPX back plane to another. And this is also always done using gigabit ethernet. Um, generally these are switched between slots and generally there's only really one in the system obviously to connect from one to another. But it's basically a way to get data from one VPX system to another. Um, the third plane is the expansion plane. Now this, this is basically any other high speed data connections you have that on the back plane that are used for slot to slot connections. Um, some examples are if you have some high speed data, you could connect, say, the SPC to another slot um, that contains basically a flash hard drive on it. Um, you could also use it for redundancy in your data plane, so if those lines fail, you have some backups. It also could be used for slot to slot high speed I.O. if you can transfer a whole bunch of data from one FPGA to another, for example. Um, also there is the management plane. Now this management plane is pretty straightforward. It only contains four signals. Um, the intelligent platform management bus from IBM. And this bus basically is a way for the sy system to identify what boards are loaded uh, at power up. Uh, basically used for the basic system BIOS information. Uh, the fifth plane, which is not listed, but it's there in your picture on, on the screen, is a utility plane. And the utility plane is pretty much all the other signals, power and all your other system signals, such as reset. All right, now the profiles. How does all of these things fit together? Well, OpenVPX defined four profiles, and you need to have all four profiles um, in order to determine if all your system components are going to work together. And the four profiles they, they defined are first the backplane profile, uh, which describes the number of slots, the protocol that's actually used, um, or that is supported on the backplane, and the uh, topology for connecting the slots. So basically, how the slots are going to be connected. There's a chassis profile, which tells you how many slots there are, uh, what type of power is available, and the cooling mythology uh, and pitch that's compliant with it. Now you have a module profile, and this is basically for any plug-in board, and this is going to give you information on the type, the size, um, the connections available, and the protocols um, for each module. For example, you could have one that tells you. Um, for example, uh, the one in the screen, at the bottom of the screen there, this is an example module profile. Um, you see you have mod 3. Um, in this case, you have 3 describes it as a 3U. You have the type of module it is, and you can have many different types, such as payload, which is a SBC, a computer module. You have a peripheral, which is a, simply an I.O. module that requires a payload module to function. You have a switch, which allows you to switch, um, basically uh, allows you to switch to either different types of uh, high-speed serial data buses or to give you additional high-speed serial data buses on the backplane, kind of like a, an Ethernet hub in an Ethernet system. You know, this gives you the ability to have one, say, example, PCIe lane come in and you have four of them going out to other slots. Uh, there's also a possibility for storage module, which is, you know, flash, hard drive, or equivalent. Um, after that, you have a dot, um, followed by a number and a letter. Now, the number tells you the number of data plane, plate, the data plane pipes, as we discussed earlier. And then the F tells you the type of pipe that it is. So in this case, we have 2F, which is two fat pipes. 
so basically, this means you could implement two PCIe4 lane implementations. After that, you have a dash with a Vita 65 reference. Um, this reference, you're actually going to have to pull out the, pro the actual specification and look it up. Um, but it gives information on the protocols that are supported um, on the data plane that was described in the number and letter before. In this case, it references the PCIe uh, Gen 1 protocol. Now, the module profile you see on your screen right there is actually the profile for Ackermann Letter Products, which you can learn about in some of our other, other videos or white papers. The final profile is a slot profile. Now, the slot profile gives specific information on how the backlinks are connected for each individual slot. Um, now, basically, each slot in a backplane is going to have its own slot profile. And that basically tells you of all those different data planes they have, they tell you where they actually are in all the various P0, 1, 2, 3, etc. connectors. Now, very important to understand in order to get your system together. So that's a basic uh, introduction to BPX. Um, we could spend a lot more time on various types of profiles. And I encourage you to read our wet paper, Introduction to BPX, which that and as long as a whole bunch of other useful information is available on our website at www.acromag.com. Thanks.